Okay, good morning and welcome to Just Daf Yom Yishir. We're learning now Maseches Yevamos, Daf Samech Dal, it's 64 today. We have an extraordinary Shir, and you know why it's even more extraordinary? Because my friend Shmuel Tfilin came to, to be here today. Shmuel is not here, but his Tfilin are here. No, Shmuel, how are you? It's been a long time, Shmuel. I haven't seen you. You haven't appeared on my show. You know, how's life going, you know? Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Yeah? Thank you. How are you, Ben Zion? I'm doing great. I want to tell everybody we have a new show coming up. Hopefully, it's going to be coming out soon. We're we'll filming tonight, I think. Um, we have an exclusive expose, if you want to say, or interview conducted around going away to hot hotels for Pesach, for Sukkot, mm-hmm. for Shavuos. Going on these trips, so they advertise yeah. in Mishpacha magazine. Uh, you go to Turkey, you go to Greece, you go Barcelona, Barcelona. You go all the ancient place, Poland. Now, what is going on over there? I have two main questions I want to ask my friend, who is an expert in this field. My brother-in-law, he really is an expert. Uh, he has conducted several of these tours himself. He knows the ins and outs. He's traveled to Poland and a lot of Eastern European countries. Knows how to get meat for very cheap. Uh, two questions for him I have. One question I have is, is it really glot kosher? Meaning... What? The hotel? Or, I mean, the well, kosher, it, mean it, kosher in... The food, first of oh, all. The food, uh, the food okay. right? What, can, you rely on, can you rely on the hex share room oh, over there? Oh, oh, I see. Um, you know, and also, we, we'll dabble into a little bit. What else goes on behind over there? Is there mixing of men and women over there? Aye, aye, this is terrible stuff. Uh, we might have to find out about. And second of all, the second interview uh, will be about the actual real cost. How much does it really cost these organizers of these events to organize them, to provide you with the food, the lodging? And how much are you paying? What is the differential between your action? Are you getting ripped off? How we know, we know you're getting ripped off, but how badly are you getting ripped off? This is stuff that... Only you're going to find on my channel where we dig in to the depth of Jewish life, Orthodox Jewish life. Glot kosher money. It says glot kosher written all over it. Or maybe not kosher at all. No, we'll figure it out. We'll get to the bottom of this. Shmuel, what do you have to say about what's going on in this channel? How do you feel like it's evolving over here? You know about my No Shulchan Aruch Yomi Shir. You just heard about that. I told you about it. It's really something else, right? It's taking off great it's gonna be uh it's it's gonna be big it's gonna be really it's big. gonna be really big um Shmuel, you know what we're learning about today today Daf Yomi Shir, we're centered on we're in the middle of sugi's approval right how many children do you have i have four I know. you have a boy and a girl i'm saying you have at least one boy yes, and at least yes, one yes, girl yes, he has at least one boy and one girl so shmua has been a kayim the mitzvah of Purvu, the Hidr, he has 12 kids, 6 boys and 6 girls. No, Shmuel does not. He does not have 6 boys and 6 girls. How many kids exactly? I have, have 4, but it's funny you mentioned because yeah. my wife spoke to a lady and she had to do some sort of paper. Yeah. And she needed to speak to a lady who comes from the, you know, the the old the old Yishu type uh, families. You know, like Meir Sharon. Yeah. And this lady, yeah, she's around 70. She married all her, all, her, all her children. Guess how many? Fifteen. Fifteen children she had. She married. They married. She married them all off. But they were all girls, right? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm joking. Well, that's crazy. What do you think about that? You think it's a good thing to have as many children as you can have as God grants you, or should there be a limit? Should there be a cap on how many children you should uh, reasonably want? It's, a, it's not a, It's amazing or how can you know people in the, the, the non-Jewish world if. You look at your bank account, and that tells you, you know, basically how much children, you know. Your your the your many Hashem gives you enough your money. Your salary, no, yeah. your salary determines the size of your family a lot of the times. I, I mean, and you found that over here also that people no, stop having I'm, kids when they can't. No, pay here it's not pay that way. Diapers. No, I'm saying in the in the, in the religious the Haredi world, it has not. There's no there's no connection between your. Uh, your your income and your size of the family. Interesting. I mean, a lot of a lot of non-Jewish people, even if they have lots of money, they only have two or three children. I know, but um, but uh, but uh, I'm saying people, the non-Jewish world that has a lot of children, it's because they have 
the resources. Which non-Jewish families, you know, have more than five or six or seven children? There are families, and really? well, let's think of what's the name, the famous. Uh, what was that famous guy? Who came from? Well, a lot of these people have Kennedy, like the Kennedy family. Did yeah. they have a lot of kids? I mean, a lot of them were married to like three wives and divorced. No, I'm not talking. This is which Kennedy? John F. Kennedy, the president. His father, isn't his father, his father, he had a lot of kids. No, they were all these ones that this one fell off of a building, this one got killed and in the war. Brothers. I don't know how many brothers there were. I, John, I don't know. Jack, you don't remember John? Yeah, brothers. Jack there was and Robert, 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 and, Robert was yes, yes, John F. Kennedy was and then this the girl, the women, the sisters. I think there were like three or four or five. I, I don't there know. Was, I don't know. There was one who was institutionalized, and there was one who was in the war, was killed in the uh, combat. I hear. Okay, I have and to look then, into this. You're saying maybe something. And who was that famous? Exactly. It was a famous, uh, a famous, uh, I forgot what it's called, not economist. Uh, he wrote a lot of books, God and Man in Yale. You know what I'm talking about? What? What book? God and Man in, in Yale. In it? Yale? Yeah, in Yale. He was, well, he was a, a famous uh, intellectual. He, he passed away. Uh, anyway, non Jewish, but he came from a very big family. Anyway. Uh, we're going to have to look into this. I think the statistics bear it out. I mean, the average, at last I heard, um, in America is 2.1 kids with a dog uh, included. So that's about, you're going to, the average, I think for the, for the ultra-Orthodox world, I think the average, I heard in Borough Park is around seven children. Um, in Israel, it might be more, maybe closer to eight yeah. or nine. You know, the, the, they had on the average the, family. So it's kind of true. a and lot. A lot. That's a big dis, uh, disparity. That's right. It's good to be a, in the business, diaper business probably, right? Yes. All right, we're going to have to start the shear now. Um, Shmuel, you can stay for the shear if you want. Um, but because it's six minutes already in and people are getting antsy that they want to finish, they have half an hour. That's true. I promise you I try to do it in half an hour. So let's get started because <clears throat> people have precious time. I understand that people's time is precious. Let's start from the bottom. We're going to talk in Ian with Mencino about the nature of the Mr. Approval. We're going to get and dig into it. Is it just a mitzvah or there's an isr not to have children also? You violate something uh, by not having children. That will be the subject of the Ben See, let's jump into it. Sama Gimel and Beis on the bottom. You're going to love this Gemara Shmuel. The Gemara says, <coughs> about seven lines from the bottom. Tanya, Lezer, Omer, Komi, Shein, Osek, with period of Rivia. Anyone who doesn't engage in period of Rivia and having children, too, the Shovet Dom, it's like he's a murderer. Shinemar, Shovet Dom, Adam, Adam, Damo, Yishava. It says in Parshas Noah, after the mob it says the person who kills another person, his blood will be spilled also. In the next passage, and then it says a connection. You have children. So if you don't have children, it's like you murdered them or one or people. Or Yaakov Omer, you're minimizing the image of Hashem. The end of that passage, Adam Yishavach says, you shouldn't murder someone because people were committed, in, uh, created in the image of a god. And again, the next passage says you should have children. Both things. It's like you kill people, you're a murderer, and you ruin the face of a Kaddish Baruch. Some people. They're great orators. They speak very well. And, you know, they darshan what the halacha should be. And they keep the Torah. Some people are very humble. They don't speak about what people should do. And they do it anyway. Those both are fine. You speak so nicely. You have a nice gesture from this pastor. But you're a bachelor. He wasn't married, Ben Azai. <clears throat> so he says, I'm really Ben Azai. Ma said, what can I do? Shnafshi Chashka Bchira famous Gemara over here. The Ram Paskin about Lacha that his heart was cleaved to the Torah. He had only desired to sit and learn all day, and therefore he was potter. Seemingly, doesn't say he did an iser. What do you mean? He said it was an as He did an iser. Sounds like we're going to delve into this morning and see on what how exactly he got off the hook over here. He says Shnafshi Chashka with Torah Eshel Olam Sheis Kaimel Yacherim. If you want the world to exist, to go on, there'll be more other people that will be engaged in Peru. There's plenty of people that have children. It's not uncommon. Tani Idach, another Bryce that basically saying saying the same thing. It's like he murders people. Again, basically a repetition. He says he, 
we diminished the face of Akadosh Baruch. When Isaiah Omer, Omer, ben Isaiah says, Bechule, he said, you do both. And then they asked him, Ben Isaiah, Darish, basically, you're not keeping your word. He said, Nafshi Chashka, but Torah, the Ram Paskins is a halacha. If you're in Nafshi Chashka, but Torah, like Shmuel was learning all day, his Nafshi Chashka, but Torah, and his Talis and Tefillin all day learning Torah. Right. Shmuel, you know you didn't have to get married? You know you didn't have to get married, Shmuel? You didn't have to get married. You can tell your wife and your kids, I didn't need you. I didn't need to do you. you I'm doing a favor to have you no, in my life. Because we, we get to sit and learn afterwards. There's a koilul and everything. Baruch Hashem, the era of koilul, you don't have to get married anymore. It's a fever up. But this is the Gemara says, Tana Rabban, Venucha Yoimer Shu Hashem Rabbah of Yisrael, it says in my midbar, that when the Mishkan stopped moving, then the Shekhin arrested on Kal Yisrael, Sam of Dalam and Alf and the Tab, Malam Yishin Hashkin Ashor Alf, Pachos Mishay Alaf, Mishay Rabbah of Yisrael. Right, the Shechina, if you want the Shechina to descend on Kali Yisrael, you have to have at least 22,000 people, 22,000 Jews. The Ravavos are a plural of 10,000. Alfei are 2,000, so that combined for 22,000. Let's say there was an instance where Kali Yisrael was down to 21,999 people. And you, one of those... People did not have children. You're causing the Shekhinah to remove each other. Do you have one child? Even one child, the Shekhinah would have made with Kali Yisrael. Now, the question is over here, who, who has to have two children with Pascha Allah? How could the Gemara say, even having one child would be good enough? You have to have two children. That is a question. Abba Khan and Omer, Mishum Rabbi Elias, are Chayav Misa. If you don't have children, you're Chayav Misa. Shnemar Abban and Layu Lahem. So by Nadav and Viu, they died, they didn't have children. It's implied from the Pasuk. If they would have had children, they wouldn't have died for their sin of going into Kodesh Kodashim. Acherim Omrim, or bringing a carbon that wasn't supposed to bring. Acherim Omrim, Gorom Lashkin, Shizal, and Yisrael. Others say, a mayor, as if Acherim says, you cause the Shkin to remove from Kalal Yisrael. Shnem, Rabbi Yosachal, Elokim, Muzarach, Aracha, Hashem says, to Avram, I'll be a God to you and your children after as much as Harecha, Harecha, the Gemara Darshans. When your children are after you, when you have children, Shkina Shorah, then the Shkina will be with Kali Yisrael. Then Zarecha, Harecha. If you don't have children, I'll meet Shorah, I'll eat him, I'll have him. Hashem, what is he going to be? Shorah Shkina, Shorah Shkina on people, not on stones and trees. The mission says, Nasa Isha Visha Ima Eser Shanim. Important halacha. It's really Lamaisa, this halacha. Uh, you marry a woman. Some people have suffer, suffer with problems of infertility. There's many as bone aolam. There's a lot of organizations that deal with these things. This is a practical Allah. It's really possible in the Shulchan Aruch. If you marry a woman and you stay married for 10 years, well, you all die. If you don't have any children, what do you do? What do you do? You can't marry a second wife nowadays. Or could you? Eino Rashai Levato. He can't be Levato. So what do you do? <coughs> What do you do? So it's a machlokus in the post game over here. It's just interesting to point out over here. There's actually one of the Rishon the Miuri, the Rabbeinu, uh, Rabbeinu Yehuda, the son of the Rush. I guess that was a tour, Rabbeinu, right? No, no, Rabbeinu Yaakov. Yaakov. Okay, so one of the sons of the Rush here, they quote it in footnote number Yehuda six over a, here yeah. in the art scroll, says Rabbeinu Gershon himself, even though he enacted a ban, you can't marry a second wife. In this case, he didn't enact that ban. So you can get married to a second wife. You don't have to divorce your wife. You can marry a second wife. And this is two days actually in the Shulchan Aruch. It's kind of hard to argue on someone who quoted the name of Rabbeinu Gershom. Other Rishonim say Rabbeinu Gershom didn't mean it. But he quotes directly from Rabbeinu Gershom. You can marry a second wife. People don't know this. Never heard of I mean, according to some countries, you can't have bigamy. You can't be married to another wife. But according to Allah, Rabbeinu Gershom himself said it's okay in this case. Uh... Gersha, if he divorced, he doesn't have to divorce, he can marry another wife. I've never heard that, never heard that happen. Uh, if he divorced her, so she can marry somebody else. The second person could say, maybe I'll have a child from her. He doesn't have to assume because she, she wasn't Zohar to have a child from the first husband, she won't give children to the second one. Even if she had a miscarriage, right? So then the 10 years start again. Even if you waited nine years, she had a miscarriage. Then you get to start 10 years again because it's a simon that she could have children. Tanarabana, Nasa Isha, 
really you have to get divorced from her. Now again, this is uh, not you don't have to do this. If you choose to only be married to one woman, then let's give you the Ksuba. But if you want to marry another wife, you can marry another wife. Like by Hagar, we know by sorry by Hagar. Maybe you weren't Zoha to have a child from Rahu Bijan Raila Davar, even though there's no conclusive proof of this. There's a memory for this. There is a little bit of a proof. At the end of 10 years of Avram living in Eretz Canaan with Sarah, then Sarah gave Hagar to him to have children. This is important in another way to teach me about this halacha that 10 years of Catholic only if you're living in Eretz Israel. So again, this halacha only applies to living in Eretz Israel because then you, you it depends on the schools of the woman. Right, Eretz Yisrael is more kedusha, so we know that if you have children, then you're not going to have children from this lady after that. Lefichach, uh, based on this, Chalahu of Shachal Sahi, let's say one of them were sick, they weren't able to be together during those ten years. Shneim Chavushim Beis Hasurim, they're both in jail, in a little minion, just like Eretz Yisrael. If you're at a part of Eretz Yisrael, right, there's no way of uh, it affects. It's a, uh, it's not your fault. You could have children, so therefore. If there is something in onus which happens which prevents from having children, it doesn't count uh, over here, just like Chutzar. Some like Rav or Rav Nachma, the Leil of Yitzchak. Why are you saying 10 years? What about Yitzchak? What about Yitzchak? They say, but Yitzchak ben Armanshan, Kakalus Rivka. He was 40 years when he married Rivka. He may know. But say, Yitzchak ben Shishim Shan, but let us hold some. But then again, it says that he was 60 years old when he finally had children, and Yaakov and Esau. Amr so, Lehi. So you can learn from that. He was able to keep her from one 10 years, together for 20 years. So the grand is only Yitzhak Akarhaya. Yitzhak was different. He was sterile. He couldn't have children normally. It was a miracle that he had children. So you can't live in If you're sterile, you can wait one, ten years because probably not going to have children. Ihach Avram Nami Akarai. Like Mara's going to say later, the Avram was a tumtum. He was someone who didn't even have a male organ. Um, how could you prove from Avram? So Mara says, Homi Bayulis. So Mara really, the article explains over here that when we learn from Avram, we don't learn from the fact that he waited ten years. From the fact that the total in its way, Say Mikate Eser Shonim, so the Torah is telling you something, even though by Avram he was awkward, he was sterile, he couldn't have children under normal circumstances, but it's telling you a drusha that for regular people, 10 years is the amount of waiting time. After that, you don't go to Boni Olam, you get a new wife. All right, so the Mara says, don't do IVF, you go, to, you, you go to get another wife. You don't go to Boni Olam. Boni Olam is only relevant during the first 10 years. Boni Olam, if you don't know what it is, it's an organization that helps couples who have problems with infertility pay for their medical bills, have children. I am not a spokesperson for Bone Olam, um, but, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, they do a lot of medicine, with IVF and things like that, in vitro fertilization, to help people have children. Uh, I think even with the science nowadays, the Gemara talks at all times, and therefore the luck would apply even nowadays, 10 years, even you Bone Olam paid your bills. You should consult your, with your local rabbi. You should consult your rabbi, exactly. I, that's very important, which Shmuel just said over here, because I do give... Shulchan Arach Yomi Shira has started it. And it's kind of interesting in the Shulchan Arach Yomi, we were talking about, yesterday we were talking about wearing clothes, you know, some of the halachas about wearing clothes. And six halachas in the Shulchan Arach, and the six makoros for those halachas were definitely not inclusive at all. Um, at best, a lot of them were hanhagos of big tzaddikim. Uh, and the Shulchan Arach learned in Isra Behetar for a common person from the story of big tzaddikim. We're not mechuyev. We're not at that level. When we get to the level of tzaddikim, maybe it's a good idea to do it. But most people are not on the level of tzaddikim. So, so I kind of asked it like in a question, a lot of the shir. But you know what? The truth is that you know the shulchan aruch is the final word on these things. Uh, I am not a rabbi. Shulchan aruch Rabbi Yosef Cairo uh, was a big rabbi, one of the biggest rabbis uh, in many years. Um, he was a rabbi in, uh, in Spain, not in Cairo, Egypt, even though his name was Cairo, uh, but. Um, he's a big rabbi. His psaq is the definitive psaq, even though it seems very strange to me. I'm going to point out it's been very strange to me. I'm going to tell you the truth, uh, what I see from the halachas. But again, if you want to follow differently the Shulchan Aruch, you really have to talk to your rabbi. You can ask him the questions that I'm bringing up also. But again, I'm not a rabbi. I can't paskin. And, and here also, I'm not a rabbi. I can't paskin. But I'm telling you the fact that it does say two days in the Shulchan Aruch whether you can get remarried over here. But again, and also whether you have to divorce your wife. You don't want to get remarried. You talk to your rabbi over here. I'm just telling you what it seems from the Gemara. The Gemara continues. <clears throat> so the Gemara says, no, the puzzle by Yitzchak, what is that necessary for? 
that puzzle wasn't telling you that 20 years is the amount of time to wait. It's telling you the reason it calculated, uh, tells you when he gave birth to tell you uh, how long, you know, basically, that Yaakov wasn't punished for 14 years of the shame of Ever, just like he told us Yishmol, right? He told us when Yishmol died, how old was Yishmol when he died? He died 137 when when uh, when when Yaakov, when Esav got married to one of his wives uh, to tell you uh, how long Yaakov lived, and therefore calculate to show you that he wasn't punished for lacking Kibbutzim when he was learning Torah. Because Torah, if you learn in the right place, is greater than Kibbutzim. The Yaakov has no other Yaakov. I'm Rabbi Yitzchak. It's a Gemara Megillah on Daf Zion. Look it up there. I'm Rabbi Yitzchak. Yitzchak Avinu Aker Haya. Yitzchak, we said before, he was sterile. Shenem Rabbi Yitzchak. Yitzchak Hashem Lenochach Hishto. Yitzchak davened to Hashem to have children. Lenochach Hishto. Opposite his wife. Al Hishto Lenem. Doesn't say he davened for his wife. El Lenochach. Opposite his wife, Malamid Shishnei Makurim Ayu Tishu, that he was on a certain level, you know, uh, he was opposite her. He was together with her. They were both had problems having children. So why does Hashem? Why does the pasuk say that Hashem listened to Yisach's tefillah? He should listen to both of them. Russia, Yisach was a tzaddik, the son of a tzaddik. Avram was a tzaddik also. Rivka was a tzaddik, yes, but she was a daughter of Lavan. Why were all the forefathers seem to have problems having children? Yaakov didn't seem to have a problem with children. I don't know. HaKadosh Baruch Hu desires the Tzvila Tzadikim. He wanted to daven, do a miracle for them. Why is the davening of Tzadikim likened to a pitchfork? Just like a pitchfork moves the grain around from one place to another. Midas Rakzanos to Midas Rakmanos, so too the Tfilas of Sadiqim change Hashem's uh, anger to Midas Rakhamim, Hashem's compassion, and does things that maybe we don't deserve. Amar Rabbi Ami, Avram of Isar and Tum and now we find out that Avram himself also was sterile. Not only was he sterile, he was a Tumtum. A Tumtum means that his male organ wasn't really present, it was covered by skin. And Sarah also, our female organ, was also covered by skin. Shnemar Abitu al Sur. Chovas, uh, top of Sarah Mukdal, and Allah Chutzavta, and Makev is born across him. Look at the rock, I meaning the rock is a metaphor for Avraham's genitals. Al Makev is born across him. Talking about Sarah's genitals, it was like a, 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 a person. Genitals. No, born across him. <laughs> a vagina. What do you want me to tell you? Al Makev is born across him. <laughs> the pit. The pit, it was compared to a pit, an empty pit, and he, his organ was compared to a rock. After that it says, look at Avram, your father, your forefather, and sorry, your, 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 your ancestors, she also wasn't able to have children. I'm not under normal circumstances. I'm not Nachman, I'm not Abuah, sorry, may know Island aside. She was, again, someone incapable of having children. She was in Akara, right? She was in Akara. Meaning she under normal circumstances she couldn't have children. Ain la vat. Why you actually pasuk ain la vat? I feel base vlad ain la. She didn't have a uterus, right? Island is is one level above, right? Some people just naturally can't have children for whatever reason. But if you don't have a uterus, you physically can't have children because there's nowhere for the child to develop. I think it's called endo uh, matrices or something like that. Endo. There's a condition called it where your uterus is either removed or it's too weak to support a child. Uh, <clears throat> this 10 year period is only the original generations Avram and Sarah, Yitzhak and Rivka they lived long nowadays people live people live shorter lives it's not 10 years it's two and a half years because that's almost the amount of time it's basically the same amount of time as three Pregnancies. If a woman gets married to a man and they wait two and a half years, this seems to be the uh, this is the opinion of Rav Nachman of Yitzchak, uh, Rav uh, Nachman. Sorry, Rosh Mol Bar Shelas, name of Rav. Then at two and a half years you wait. Kenegis Shlosh Yiburim Rava, which is basically twenty-seven months, which is close to thirty months. So then where's the Rava? I'm uh, Rava. I'm a Rav Nachman. Shlosh Shanim. He says, no, it's three years now. Each year, one of the rememberings that Hashem remembered three ladies, even though Rakaros, Amar Amar, Rosh Hashanah, Nifkidu, Sarah, Rachel, Vachana, Rosh Hashanah, Hashem remembered Sarah, Rachel, and Chana to have children. 
even though they normally rock koros. I'm a rabbi, listen to Lahani Kloli. Rabbi says these, what we just said previously, is not really the Allah Hamifti Masis in Man talking, and who's the one who wrote the Mishnah? Yes, Rebbe. I made David in Mishani already in the, the times of David Avinu. Uh, David Avinu. <laughs> the time of David Hamelech. Uh, uh, the, the years were less. There were 70 years. He said in Tehillim, David says, Our days are 70 days, and Rebbe lived after David Hamelech. Yeah. So the Gemara, the Gemara, so basically conclusively 10 years is the halacha. So the Gemara says, So we're assuming the reason in the Mishnah, <coughs> right, that he gets divorced from her or he gets another wife is because he didn't merit to have children with her. Maybe it was her fault. Maybe she wasn't Zoha uh, to have children with him. And therefore he should be able to divorce her without getting married because it's her fault. She is not, a woman has no commandment to have Puravu, to have children. Uh, since a woman has no commandment to have children, so therefore it can't be that it was based on, uh, it can't be that it was based on, uh, it wasn't her fault, um, and therefore it can never be her fault. You can only punish someone who has an obligation to do it. So it must be the man's fault. Uh, Ain't is true. I'm really Rabban or Abba Bar Zab and Nasi is of Olid Bunny. They told him, go get married and have children. I'm a little Izaka. Apparently, he had a first wife or if they'll marry a second one. Izaka have the Kamaisa. He says, if I was had married, I would have had from the second one. The mission seems to say you're supposed to get married again. So the Mirror's house and the Huya Kamatki Lahu the Rabbani is pushing with Rabban and the Rabba Bar Zab the Yaki wanted to tell him that he is sterile. He became an Akar, he became someone who can't have children, Enoch. Mipirke uh, the Rav Huna because he stayed too long in the share of Rav Huna he held back the fact that he got to the bathroom and ruined his reproductive organs also Rav Gidol Ayakim Mipirke the Rav Huna apparently this is common Rav Gidol he also stayed in Rav Huna's share too long Rav Chelbo Ayakim Mipirke the Rav Huna again Rav Chelbo also Rav Huna must have given a long share and a 10 hour share Rav Shish Ayakim Mipirke the Rav Huna Rav Shish also had this problem Rav Chelbo Ayakim Mipirke the Rav Huna he was about to lose his ability to propagate Tal Yua and he had this disease where his the membrane uh, between uh, the rep the rep, 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 uh, reproductive tract and the urinary tract uh, are connected, and that membrane was about to blow, and therefore was about to lose his ability to reproduce. Uh, Talyu of Arza, they wanted to fix him, so they tied him to a cedar tree, the Beirav, outside the 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 base medrash. Another kmineka hutza yarka, something green came out of his male organ, his penis. Amar Achav or Yaakov, and apparently it cured him. Amar Achav or Yaakov, she's in Sabe Havina. Bechulu Yaakov and Pirkei Rav Huna. Seventy, sixty elders all sat in his shear, and they all became uh, sterile because of it, his shear lasted too long. Levar Ma'ana, except for me, the kind of Nashia Chagamot Hachai Baldea, because I was very fortunate because I um, I was smart. I attached myself to a cedar tree, and that was the cure. That is the cure if you're about to become. Sterile. Samara so says, Girsha Muteris, uh, the Mishnah says that if he divorced the wife who didn't have bear him children for 10 years, she can marry somebody else. Shani and she can marry a second husband, Shlisha Lo. She can't marry a third husband, or a third husband can't marry her. Mazis and Mani. Who's our Mishnah? Rebbe, Mazis Rebbe, Sanya Mala Rishon, he holds that two times make a Chazaka, not three times. Sanya Mala Rishon, who mace, to give a brismila to your first son and died on account of the brismila. Shani, the, bro- the blood didn't clot. Shani, Omeis gave a blood to the, uh, bris to the second child he died. Shlishi lo samol, you can't do a bris to your third son. And he remains an RL, but he's allowed to eat truma and things like that. We'll see if he's allowed to eat truma because uh, he's onus machmas mila. Dear Rabbi Rabbi Rishon, Galil Omer Shlishi Tamol, the third son you do give a bris mila, you try to give mila, but if he dies also reveal a samol, the fourth one you don't. Atanya Ipcha, the Bryce says the opposite, meaning Rabbi is the one who says three times. Rishon Galil says two times. Let's see which one. Is the last one. The last teaching, they, obviously, one brysa flipped the wrong way. Let's see which one is the last brysa, the last teaching, which should conclusively establish whose position was who. Tashma, Damar, Bchi, Barabar, Miyokhna, Maisa, Barba, Chayos. They didn't know the four sisters, Bisipori, Bisipori, Northern Israel, Shamala, Rishono, Mace, Shneem, Mace, Shlishes, Mace, four sisters, they each had a son. Again, the first sister, they gave a bris to her son. He died. The second one died. The third one died. Revius, Baal, Sathnei, Rosh Hashanah, Gamaliel. They came around with Rosh Hashanah, Gamaliel. Amr Lo, Al Tamol. 
So now the fourth one, don't do Altamuli, don't give a bris of a Dilma. So you sound like the first three were okay. The of a Dilma, you ask a shlishis, they only asked him the fourth time. Maybe he also would have said, now we have Amar La. He would also said by the third one, also don't do a bris mila. Im came, I asked to do say, Rukhi Barabba. Rukhi Barabba is obviously teaching you something. In fact, he's teaching you, what is the Kiddush? He's teaching you, he's teaching you, obviously, by Chazaka, the Shemalil whole three times establishes a Chazaka, not two times. The Dilma, so the Mariah says, Hakam Ashman da Chayas Machas. Maybe he's teaching you something else. Maybe really, it was a second child. He also would have said, the third child would have said, don't do the Mila. And he's teaching you something else that the fact that sisters could establish a Chazaka is because my sister or sisters, and she has a son and I have a son, doesn't mean it's established a Chazaka. That's the Kiddush. That you can establish a chazaka precedence from one sister to another sister. So the Gemara says, um, So at this point, the Gemara assumes that's a valid rejection. So now that we say that it, we could establish that sisters do establish a chazaka, you shouldn't marry a woman that her sisters, or her siblings, are nichfin, they are not able uh, to walk properly. And they have leprosy, they have skin disease. Who this Chazik classes them? The only if there's three siblings that have that. My Havi Allah, Kiyas Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef, Amar Uvda Hava Kamei, Rabbi Yochanan, and Machnish the Maon. There was an incident in front of Rabbi Yochanan in the base Knesset in Maon. The Yomah Kippur Shachal Yos B'Shav. The Yom Kippur fell on Shavas. The Malar Rishon of Meis. They gave a bris milah to the first son and he died. Shni of Meis again, the second son again. A bris milah on Shavas Yom Kippur of Meis. Shlishis so Balat Nevana. Shlishis so they came in front of Amar La Lachiu Moli. Or maybe the first two didn't happen in Shabbos. Yom Kippur. The third one did. So he said you could do the bris milah on Yom Kippur and Shabbos. You know, in Yom Kippur and Shabbos, it has to be the eighth day. It has to be zdocha Shabbos and Yom Kippur. Only if you really are allowed to do it. I'm allowed. Abaye chazik asharis hisur zakanta. You're allowing two things over here. First of all, it's asher to do a bris milah. It's not going to be effective. And second, on Shabbos Yom Tov, it's a chabura, making a wound. The sakanda, sakani, the child might die. Samachala abaye ba'azal. But abaye, even though he had this question, he was so much on this teaching. And he said a chazaka two times doesn't make a chazaka you need three times. Azal naspa lechoma bart the isi bray the rabbi Yitzchak bray the rabbi Yehuda. He married a woman. Her name was Choma. Uh, she was the daughter of isi bray the rabbi Yitzchak bar Yehuda. The naspa rachava the pumudisa. She previously her first marriage was rachava lisa v'shachem. He died when they got married. Yitzchak bray the rabbi rachana v'shachem. Then she proceeded to marry Yitzchak the son of rabbi rachana and he died also. And Aspa, who, and then Abai was a third husband. He married Vishakha. He ended up dying. Amar Rav Amika, the Avid of the Benapsh. Would Abai have done something like this? Kihai, Ayud Amar Avin the Samcha Yitzchak. Some Sumcha Lav Bar Samcha. He says Avin when he teaches halachas in the name of Yochanan, you can rely on him. Yitzchak Sumcha Yitzchak, who was the who was the teacher of this teaching, but Yitzchak Breder Arab Brachana, um, who was red. I don't know why he's red. I like the color red. Lav Bar Samcha. I can't rely on Avin Yishtem Chazara. The reason you can tell me on Avin. His teachings, because he was he reviewed his material. Yisrael Sumka in Wachazar Yisrael Sumka doesn't review his teachings. The Ode, and where the Pligil in Yan Mila. Maybe they're arguing Rabbi Rab, and Rabbi Shmuel by Mila, but Nisuin Pligil is everyone. They argue by by Nisuin. Maybe everyone agrees by Nisuin two times make Chazaka. And the Gemara says, yeah, it is a Machlokas by Nisuin. Also by the Tanya, the price supports and Nisuin is the Rishon of Meis Lasheni with Meis Lishi is Loti Nasi. Divi Rabbi Shmuel Omer Lishi Tinasi Lervi Loti Nasi. Even though the Mishnah is like Rabbi Shmuel holds. She can marry the, the third time, the fourth time, you can't marry. So Gemari says, it makes sense by Mila. Uh, there are certain families that have thin blood, meaning uh, the blood doesn't clot. Some families, it's genet uh, had, uh, genetically, uh, what's the word? Okay, I don't know the word right now. Genetically, it's based on the family, the Kamid Dhamma. Hereditary. Um the Kamidama Lani Su in my time. The Suan, why is it linked? Why does one thing establish Khazak? I'm like Murakh Ravashi Akim Ravimi Magron Mishmi the Ravuna Mayan Gorim. No, there is something genetically involved in women marrying a woman who comes from a vagina, she has a disease in her vagina, so therefore that would cause Ravashi Amar Mazal Gorim. He says no, that a woman can carry mazel. She has luck on that woman, so her luck kill her husband. It's my binayu, you can be nayu the arsel, mace in knock of Niklo Mace. I would establish a chazaka, so let's say she got engaged, or she, or the husband fell off a tree. So, in these cases, it has to be the mazal. It can't be the mayan because he didn't die. He fell off a tree. It wasn't from being together, or there's only Everson, They weren't together, so there was no vaginal disease, um, you know, sexually transmitted disease, STDs. 
uh, not a problem. We'll get more into that tomorrow. Uh, stick around for Ian Ben Sion. We'll discuss the nature of the mitzvah of Ruhu. Is it an Isser? Not the Ruhu or just you're not the kind of mitzvah. You're not going to want to miss this. See you there. Bye.